Welcome everyone to session 10 of your AI agent MBA. If you've made it this far, congratulations. This is the third to last session. Um, and in this session, we are going to talk about knowledge bases. So let's just dive right in. So first, by quick way of recap, we talked in the last session about what a large language model is. A large language model is a very complex AI machine that takes in some text called a prompt and predicts the text that is most likely to come after that prompt, which is the response. It could be a continuation of the thought. It could be a response. If it's a question, it could be a summary. Depending on what you put in the prompt, the, the response will differ. But fundamentally, it's a machine that turns text into the next most likely text to occur after that. We talked about one critical limitation of AI models yesterday, which is their context window. Recall that the context window refers to how large the input text can be in either the prompt, that's what's typically referred to as the context window, but there's also a limit on the amount of text that can be produced as the output. So you'll see I have a table on this slide that shows for some, some last generation models what the context window is, how many tokens or words you can put in as a prompt, and then how many tokens or words you can get back. And this will probably raise the question, what do I do if the context window is not big enough for my task? What if I want to use all of the previous emails I've ever written in my life or all of the blog posts my company has ever written, or I wanna reference hundreds and hundreds of pages of information online? How do, I, how do I work with that huge amount of data and still be able to create like successful prompts and responses that take advantage of a data, data that's larger than what can fit into the context? And it turns out that some very clever people created a technique called retrieval augmented generation that solves this problem. Some of you may have heard of it. It's, called, it's you might have heard of referred to as RAG, but RAG is basically a technique where you have a, a knowledge base that is much larger than what could fit into the context window. And so instead of passing that entire knowledge base into the context window in your prompt, you have an intermediate step where you first retrieve the most relevant content from that knowledge base, and then just pass that into the prompt. So you can think of it like, let's say we have this giant corpus of every no novel every, ever written in English, and you're asking a specific question about novels written about the whaling industry in New Bedford, like what religion was ever in New Bedford or something like that. What your retrieval augmented generation system would do is it would first look in that knowledge base for like, what novels are relevant to the whaling industry in New Bedford? Like, are there any nuggets of this knowledge base that contain information or context relevant to the task? It'll retrieve just those snippets from those novels, and then it will pass those into the context window of the prompt for it to be able to answer the question effectively. So retrieval augmented generation is a, is a very cool technique that lets you have an effective context window that's much larger than a real context window. Now, it's not exactly a context window because you're not passing in every single element of the entire knowledge base. You're pre-filtering the knowledge base down to the things that the AI model thinks are likely to be relevant to that particular use case. So in many ways, it can simulate having an infinite, an infinite context window, even if it's not true in practice. One of the techniques I talked about in the last session actually already uses retrieval augmented generation. And that's when you use built-in search with your AI model. Remember we talked about if you want your AI to have access to information after its knowledge cutoff, it needs to do live online searches of the web. And the technique it uses to do that is retrieval augmented generation, where instead of it being a corpus of every knowledge ever written in English, the corpus is what it can search for on Google. It's, and so when you ask for a prompt that you ask prompt and you give the AI access to live online lookups, Based on that prompt, it'll try to run a few Google search queries, then it'll pass those into the context window of the prompt to be part of the response or to inform the response. So this is the key technique. And you can see in this graphic kind of how it works. The user still puts in a prompt just like before, but the model in the background before it generates the response directly goes to uh, the data source, can be back and forth many times with many queries to figure out what context from that data source is going to be relevant to respond to, to that prompt. So there's a few different ways to create knowledge bases. And what I have here is a screenshot of relay.app. 
But if you've created knowledge bases via custom GPTs or Claude projects, they use exactly the same mechanism. And you can think of there being two types of files that you add to your knowledge base. One, you can add static knowledge to your knowledge base. You can upload a PDF. You can upload some text. You can upload some images. You can upload a set of PDFs with all of the, the novels in the English language from the last, the last century. And that knowledge base will remain static. Another technique you can use is you can upload what's called a dynamic knowledge base, meaning every file in the Google Drive folder, this Google document or this Google spreadsheet. And because Google Docs and Google Spreadsheets are live objects that can change, your AI model will always have access to the most up-to-date information. So this technique can be really, really valuable if you want to build up a knowledge base on the fly as you are, for example, replying to emails. And I'm going to show you how to do that uh, in, in just a moment. So whenever you're going into an AI tool that takes advantage of RAG, whether it's a, a workflow and agent building tool like Relay, whether it's a chat bot like ChatGPT or Claude, you're going to see a dialogue that, lo that looks something like this. Like, what do you want to stick in the knowledge base? Do you want to stick some existing files? Do you want to write some new text? Or do you want to create a live connection to a Google Doc or a Google Sheet or a Dropbox file or whatever else may be updated over time? Okay, with that, I just want to dive in and, and show you how to, how, to, how to work with these things. Okay, so I've created a, a very simple um, test workflow. Let me share the correct tab. Okay, there we go. I've created a very simple test workflow that I'm going to use to demonstrate this, which is, let's say I start a run manually and I want to ask a question. And then in my AI step, I want to answer the question based on the information from a knowledge base. So I'm going to say, answer the following question. Reference information from your knowledge base. Now, you can see in Real App, I have a button here that says knowledge. <laughs> You're going to click that button. It turns out I've already uploaded a bunch of knowledge into my knowledge base, like all my previous podcast appearances and all of my LinkedIn connections and our stock two type two report. In this case, let me do our stock two type two report. Stock two is a security and compliance certification. So for example, if I want to build an email auto replying bot that automatically answers questions based on the information in our stock two report, I would attach the stock two report. So let's use that as our demo use case. Again, this is a static PDF. It's always going to reference the exact same information. And the AI is going to answer this question using the information in the knowledge base. So now let me start a run and show you how it works. So I'm going to ask a question, which is like, on what date did Relay.app get SOC 2 certification? And again, the way this is going to work behind the scenes is the AI model is going to say, I'm trying to answer this question in the knowledge base. It's going to initiate search queries into that knowledge base. Like, are dates mentioned anywhere? Is related app mentioned anywhere? In the same way that you would query a search engine. It's going to then retrieve snippets of that document that match that search query and use those to generate the response to, to my prompt. And so now you can see it's done. And it said, May 2nd, 2025. That's a very correct and, and concise answer. And I can actually show you, um, just, just for fun, I can show you where that appears in the SOC 2 Type 2 report. This is the period of the review. And then I'm not going to show you, but on the second page, it shows that the certification was granted on, on May 2nd. Um, so this is the simplest kind of knowledge base use case. You have a static file, like a PDF or some text that you've written. And then in response to uh, a question or any sort of AI prompt you might want to do, you ask it to reference the knowledge base. Now I'm going to show you how to use a dynamic knowledge base where we're accessing the latest information from a Google Sheet. And then we're populating that Google Sheet with new information as we go. Um, and so the use case I want to show you here is building an email auto reply agent. And so the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to say, I want to uh, invoke my email auto reply agent whenever the label to reply was added to a thread. Turns out I have another AI uh, workflow that automatically checks which emails I should reply to and not and add this to reply to reply label. And now what I want to do is I want to draft a reply 
based on a knowledge base. So let me go to another Google Sheet and show you my knowledge base. So I've created a testing spreadsheet for this, uh, for this task, and I'm gonna show you how to fill it in right now. So let's say I'm gonna say uh, original email, AI reply, actual reply. You can see here that I'm implicitly going to be training my AI to do better. Cause I'm gonna show it the original email that was sent to me. I'm gonna put in the reply that the AI included. And I'm also gonna put in the reply that I actually said so the AI can learn where it wasn't meeting my expectations of kind of the language or the tone or the kinds of things I would say in, in reply. I created a new AI step. I said, AI write, I'm writing an email and I'm gonna say, please write a reply to the last email in the attached thread. Consult the knowledge base to write your reply. I'm gonna then pass in the entire thread and I'm gonna go to my knowledge base. I'm gonna add a new data source because I just made that spreadsheet right now. You're gonna see that this first spreadsheet that comes up is the knowledge base test. You can see that this sheet is currently empty. That's okay, <laughs> because we're gonna build it up over time. And you can see that the AI is now gonna have access to both the thread and it's gonna have access to the knowledge base. You can see that this icon, this purple kind of cylindrical database icon, that tells me that we're using a retrieval augmented generation approach to accessing this via the knowledge base, rather than just passing the full content directly into the product. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a draft reply based on, I'm gonna to reply to the last message in the thread and I'm gonna use the AI's output in my draft reply. Then I'm gonna wait for this reply to be sent. And after the reply is sent, I'm gonna update my knowledge base. Let me show you how to do that. I'm gonna add a row to the Google Sheet. I'm going a little fast here, but I'll explain exactly what's going on. And uh, let's see how smart the AI is at figure out what I wanna put into the sheet. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna put into that sheet. In the original email column, I'm gonna put in the body of the last message in the thread I'm replying to, perfect. In the AI reply column, I'm gonna put in the AI output of my step two. And then in the actual reply column, I'm gonna put in automatically the reply that was actually sent. Because you'll see that in step three, I created a draft reply, and then I'm waiting for that draft to actually be sent before I log the actual reply. And so what I've created by doing that is a dynamic knowledge base that every time I respond to an email, it's gonna automatically log, what was the email that was being replied to? What did the AI think the answer was? And what did I end up actually replying? And so as you start thinking about the different use cases that you want to use AI agents for, I bet that you'll find a lot of them require some historical knowledge or context that is either too large for the context window or you need to live update over time. And so these are the techniques you wanna use. If you have a huge PDF or a set of huge PDFs, you can just upload those as static files into your knowledge base and then reference them in the prompt of your AI step. And if you want to dynamically kind of teach your AI agent over time, a very powerful technique for doing that is maintaining a spreadsheet or a Google doc in your knowledge base and then writing additional content to that spreadsheet or Google doc over time. Okay. I hope you found this really valuable. You now understand the, the fundamentals of retrieval augmented generation. You'll know what people mean whenever they say RAG. And then practically, you know how to create a knowledge base in real app that you can use if you have use cases that require you to go beyond the context window. So that, thank you so much for joining and I'll see you next time for the second to last session.